Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. I just have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can see the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot he hear or see you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week um, and will be on the same website in which you registered. I'd like to now um, hand it over to the presenters. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. My name is Claire Leitzen. I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission. Thank you for spending a piece of your afternoon with us today. I don't know where you might be calling in from, but it is a beautiful fall day here in Salem, Oregon, and we're excited to talk with you a little bit more about Willamette University. Before we do that, I wanna jump in here and introduce you to the other panelists who are joining me from many different facets of campus today. So I'll go ahead and pass it to Sue. Hi everyone, my name is Sue Corner. I'm the Director of Recruitment here at Willamette, which means I get to work with lots and lots of our applicants. Um, most specifically, I work with students from Montana, Nevada, Idaho, and Wyoming. Kelly? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. It is indeed a glorious day in Salem, Oregon, and that picture behind uh, Sue's head there is about what it looks like this time of year. Um, I am Kelly Strawn. I uh, have a number of roles. I am the faculty associate dean for curriculum and currently the acting director of institutional research. And I'm a, I am also a professor of sociology in the sociology department at Willamette. Tara? Uh, like Kelly said, my name is Tara. I'm a current student at Willamette. I'm a senior. I'm a physics major. Um, I work in the Office of Admissions. And then I do a lot of other things on campus, which I'll talk more about later. And then back to Claire. Thanks, everyone. Like I mentioned, I'm one of the senior assistant directors. I recruit, recruit students and work with students from the greater Seattle area down to, to Tacoma, pardon me, and then from parts of the Midwest, so Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. On the screen here that we are sharing with you, it kind of gives you an overview of what we're going to be chatting about today. We just did our overview. We'll talk about the academic experience at Willamette, and then we'll talk about life outside the classroom. And then we'll save some time at the end to talk about applying to and paying for college. Additionally, we'll leave time for any questions that you might have. We also have someone who's answering your questions now, so feel free to use the Q&A feature as we go through the presentation, and we will get to your question shortly. Let's jump in. We were founded in 1842. That's a really long time ago. We were actually a university before the state of Oregon was recognized as a state of the union. So we like to say that Salem and the state of Oregon grew up around and because of the Willamette people. We are a four year private liberal arts institution and we are supported by three professional schools, our College of Law, the Atkinson Graduate School of Management and the Claremont School of Theology joined us within the last year. Additionally, we are one of the 40 colleges that change lives. I'm sure many of you who are joining us today are aware of the colleges that change lives because that's why we're here together. StriveScan partnered with the colleges that change lives and here we are as one of the 40 and we are so proud to be, have been a member of the colleges that change lives for the many iterations that it has gone through. A quick overview for you, kind of a number snapshot here to give you an idea of who we are. We have 1,700 undergraduate students, um, 600 graduate students. I normally joke with students, if you are hoping to be anonymous when you go to college, well, limit might not be the best place for you, right? Our average class size is 17. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. So you're going to see familiar faces everywhere you go. You're going to, your faculty will know you by name. You'll be expected to participate and engage in the classroom. And I'm sure Tara will talk about that a little later in our presentation. There's certainly no shortage of opportunities to study at Willamette. We have over 50 academic programs with an opportunity to design your own major if you might be interested in that as well. A couple fun facts here for you. We own 305 acres of land just north of campus. It's called Xena. It's what I like to call an academic playground. Our, particularly our biology and environmental science students can kind of use it as a collegiate level field trip, if you will, to go take samples and then bring them back um, to the labs on campus. Other than that, it's a recreational outdoor space only open to the Willamette community. 
We have a 54 year partnership with Tokyo International University in Japan. Their satellite campus is called Tokyo International University of America or the acronym TIUA. They send about 100 international students over every year and they are welcomed into our campus community. It's a wonderful cross-cultural experience for all of our students to be able to engage with international students right there as well. In a few moments, you'll see a picture of this, but we are 76 feet from the state capital of Oregon. I did take a tape measure across the road last year with another one of my colleagues to see just how close we were, 76 feet for some back pocket trivia for you. 80% of the interns in that building are Willamette students. I think that speaks really well to the rapport we have with our local government, but also with the city of Salem at large. Our students are very much a part and the heartbeat of our campus community, but they're also very well respected in the Salem community. Last but not least here, we have over 66 study abroad programs. So there's certainly no shortage of opportunities here for you to experience the world and take your Willamette education wherever you might go there. If you have any questions about that, we're happy to answer. Again, feel free to use the Q&A. But for now, I'm gonna pass it off to Sue for a little tour. Thanks, Claire. I wish um, I wish we were actually on campus together for you to see uh, the, the beautiful campus in person. As Kelly mentioned, the picture behind me really does kind of look like today. Um, Claire, if you want to go to the next picture, um, I love this shot of our campus because it really does exemplify what Claire mentioned about our proximity to the state capitol building. You can see our, our most historic building on campus there in the forefront, the red brick, um, and the capitol building, which was it sits on land that was gifted by Willamette to the state of Oregon and it was built um, kind of so that those two buildings match up um, so that the Capitol Tower um, mirrors the cupola on top of our building. Um, so it, the proximity and the opportunity because of the fact that Salem really did grow up around us is rather hard to overstate. I love this picture too because you can see um, off to the left the five giant sequoias that were planted at Willamette's 100th anniversary. Um, they're called the star trees and if you stand in the middle of them and look up the space that's created um, is, is a perfect shape of a star. So there's lots of legends and lore around the star trees and they're a favorite place to, to stop by on campus. The next slide shows um, the mill stream that runs through the middle of our beautiful campus. There's something about having water that's really special. <laughs> and contrary to popular belief, it does not rain every day in Oregon. Um, for people outside of the region, I think sometimes that's the perception and that that is not the case. And <laughs> we have beautiful fall weather, we have beautiful spring weather in Oregon. And it's always fun to see how students will congregate around the mill stream when the weather is nice. And then the last quick slide that I want to show you is um, this sort of fun map um, drawing that shows Willamette in the center. You can see the state capital to the north, just as we've mentioned. Um, on the other side of us, directly across the street as well, is this um, one of the state's largest hospitals, Salem Health. Um, and the proximity to that organization is just as great as the capital um, in that our large pre-med program really benefits from having this um, proximity to, to a large hospital. You can see the downtown corridor just near us with all kinds of restaurants and coffee shops and movie theaters and there's a pharmacy and a grocery store. Everything students need is easy walking distance. There are also large state parks not far from us, the Riverfront Park, which went, runs along the Willamette River and Bush Park, where some of our playing fields are located. All of these things are within an easy walk of campus. So Salem is a great place to be a college student. I'm gonna hand it off to Tara to talk a little bit about, um, oh, sorry, I'm gonna hand it off to the next person to talk a little bit about the academic experience. Thanks, Sue. Um, sorry, Kelly. No, no, not at all. Um, I, very quickly, I just want to introduce you to the to the academic experience at Willamette University. Certainly, our greatest resource is our is our faculty um, and the access that students have to it. Uh, Willamette faculty are all trained at the best universities across the country, and even a few international universities. 
they are about 98% uh, PhD faculty. All of them are active researchers who involve students in the research. Uh, and it's just really, really fantastic, fantastic faculty to work with. Um, I would underscore the idea that in the slide there that, that, that access is, is important. Um, faculty choose a place like Willamette precisely to be able to work with students to the extent that we are able to work with them. So just about anybody who wants to, to cultivate their own research project, work with other faculty on their research projects, or simply be able to interact on a regular steady basis with faculty are able to do so at Willamette. There's just a, a, a genuine interest in that. It's one of the things from which we derive the highest satisfaction in our jobs. And we really, really like to, to work with students. Our first year students uh, all take um, a, a, co a course that we call the College Colloquium. Uh, it's really kind of a, a, a leading edge kind of course that uh, when we started it about 15 years ago and we have recently renovated it to sort of keep up with sort of trends in higher education. Uh, every student is in a small class of about 14 other students. The professor of that class becomes your academic advisor for the first year of your, of your career at Willamette University. And each class uh, focuses on a different topic that, that, have, that the faculty chooses um, just to make kind of the, the transitional experience into college sort of a light and interesting one as far as the topic goes, but also give students the opportunity to polish up their skills, their reading, their writing, their discussion, uh, their debate skills in a class, uh, in their colloquium class. We are really proud of our, our innovative curriculum. Just a year and a half ago, we put a whole new general education program in place um, we thought that the old one was a little too bulky, it didn't leave students with enough flexibility to pursue their own interests, um, while at the same time giving them the sort of solid base that they need to, to be successful in college. So the new curriculum uh, is a little bit smaller, but it emphasizes some things that we think are really important in the 21st century, uh, in particular a combination of, of breadth of basic education and exposure to um, different perspectives. Uh, world engagement, that sort of thing that we uh, all can see in the 21st century is very important. We emphasize experiential learning in a, in a variety of ways, whether that's through service learning in particular classes, whether that is through study abroad, a very large fraction of our students engage in some sort of off campus or study abroad experience in the course of their four years. Um, the internships, uh, in, and as was, has been mentioned a couple of times, internships in the state capitol across the street, um, I always like to remind people that uh, for all the attention that the state capital gets, uh, Salem, Oregon is actually the site of at least three different governments. It's the site of the city government, the county government, and the state government. And there are federal offices in Salem as well, um, all of which result in uh, too many opportunities. There are more opportunities in our town for students than there are students to fill them. Um, so I can tell you uh, firsthand from my experience in sociology that when we are able to put students into their senior experience uh, in, a, in an internship location, uh, the sites are enthusiastic and uh, very, very supportive of what we would like students to, the experience we would like students to get through that. So we're going to take a pause here for a minute and show you a quick video about something we call our hearths. really embodies the ideal of Willamette as a residential liberal arts college. The history of the hearth goes back to the renovation of Collins Science Center in 1981. One of the spaces that was last to be finalized was the space that became chemistry hearth. The architect said, okay, we'll just put some tables there with chairs and call it a hearth as a gathering place for faculty and students. We were interacting almost immediately. The hearth I see as a community space. It's kind of neat for the students in a particular discipline to feel like they have the spot that they can go where they can find the other students that are doing what they're doing. So it's really a place of connection. 
I have my office with a desk against the wall so that there's open space inviting people in, but the hearth also invites people out. It's right outside our offices, the charm and the draws and the fact that students here feel comfortable coming up and asking a question about anything. You get a lot of time to talk one-on-one -on -one with different professors and you just learn a lot of subtle things. And you can talk to all kinds of different students. I like it working in here better than I like working in the library. It's easier to find people who know what you're working on. It's social, but it's also collaborative learning. Willamette is a very egalitarian place where faculty genuinely care about students. We collaborate and share, and our doors are always open. From a good chemistry standpoint, another way to think of the space is as a bonding space. When you're working with somebody personally on something, you can just see that, the, you know, the wheels turning in their mind, and there's that sort of click when the idea comes. For me, it's always a joy to see that, you know, just see the learning actually happening right in the moment. You're not a good teacher unless you can actually creatively meet students who come with a very diverse range of backgrounds. I feel like the hearth really makes us unique. I don't see why any other university wouldn't want to have this. The hearth is the simple space where very rich connections occur that really defy simple description. Mute off. Okay, so uh, a couple more things about the academic experience at Willamette University. Um, to me, perhaps the most exciting and most important thing that I have to share with you today is about the new programs that we have either put in place over the last couple of years or are putting in place effective for this coming uh, a year from now, the fall 2021. Um, Willamette University has some really, really tremendous potential for synergies between not just uh, large entities like the state capital or Salem Health that Sue mentioned, but we have our own graduate schools. And as uh, you probably hear a little bit more about, we're adding a fourth school here very soon. Moment, uh, more on that in a moment. Our goal in the last, starting about two or three years ago and, and headed into the immediate future is to develop programs that take much better advantage of the, of the potential synergies and partnerships that we have within our own institution. And so one of these uh, that will be launched uh, a year from now is the business major. This will be the first time Willamette University has offered a business major in about 25 years. We started a business minor about three years ago. It has been so popular and we have uh, such strong resources that we've come to realize that, that we really uh, need to be offering a business major. So students who come to Willamette to do this will take advantage of the strength of the liberal arts education at the in the College of Arts and Sciences, but also through the strength of the faculty in our very highly regarded business school. We have also launched recently a major in public health. Uh, this is in, um, in development. It was launched about a year and a half ago. I describe it as in development um, only because there's still so much potential left to, to tap into. Uh, the program is fully in place. The undergraduate degree is fully in place. We have tremendous core faculty at Willamette and tremendous, tremendous partnerships literally across the street on the south side of campus. The, the state capitol is 76 feet away on the north side. Salem Health is probably roughly 76 feet away on the south side. Um, and then another one that we have recently put in place, I've been involved in this uh, most directly myself, is a data science major and 3-1 and master's program together with our business school. Um, students who arrive at Willamette and know that they want to do the data science major should be able to do the joint BS MS master's degree in four years, which uh, may seem a little hard to believe. But uh, again, uh, if you know that when you start out and can get started in the first semester, uh, we have built it in a way that makes it possible to get through all of the course credits and all of the classes that one needs uh, in four years. Um, I suspect that we may see as many students doing it in actually five years, which is more typical of the other joint programs that we have had, but it can be done. Um, we've built it to make it possible to be done for those who really know that's what they wanna do when they've arrived. So just a couple of other quick notes about the, our relationship with our graduate schools and the joint degree programs. Uh, we have a long-standing and very, very successful three plus two um, 
BA or a BS degree plus an MBA. You do three years at the College of Arts and Sciences at Willamette University, and then do two years at the Atkinson School of Management, um, which is just across the street on the West. There's a lot of crossing streets at Willamette University. Um, and uh, the fourth year in between, so after three years at the College of Arts and Sciences, the fourth year you do mostly coursework at the business school, but you also complete your uh, capstone experience for your undergraduate degree in that fourth year. And then the fifth year you're on to graduate school entirely. We also have a three plus three uh, BABS and JD degree with the law school. And as I mentioned before, we are we have put in place uh, effective this year, uh, the three one BS plus MS in data science. Um, I cannot assure you that there will be other ones, other degrees coming, but we certainly have other ideas in mind with the synergies between uh, the new Claremont School that has joined us a couple of years ago and the potential for the very, very new merger that was just announced a couple of weeks ago with the Pacific Northwest College of Art. Um, I noticed that someone asked in one of the questions and it has already been answered very, very clearly and very effectively. So I will simply say, uh, we really just don't know yet what all the great potential for our partnership with the Pacific Northwest College of Art, which is up in Portland. And so we are now going to be building programs, not just in Salem, but in partnership with locations and resources there in Portland as well. So I will stop there and hand the floor over to Tara. Awesome, thanks Kelly. Um, so like I think Claire and Kelly mentioned before, we have a ton of access to different research opportunities on campus and off campus. Um, specifically for me, I took part in the Weber Scholar Program. As a female STEM major, the Weber Scholar Program combines research with the faculty on campus and also as um, education outreach program with elementary students in a local elementary school where you teach them just kind of the basic STEM lessons um, and it was a really great way to kind of get out into the community and integrate ourselves within that community and again like the teachers and anybody we interacted with especially like the younger students were super excited to like get to actually see like, like these real college students and it was so great to go over to that school once a week and teach them um, in addition to the research opportunities, there are tons of different internships. Um, I actually got internship credit for one of my student leadership positions on campus. Um, and you can also get academic credit for those as well to help kind of balance out, um, you know, you might not end up taking a class, but you could end up, you know, committing a lot more hours to a specific internship as well. Um, although I didn't, didn't participate in study abroad, I have a lot of friends who have and they say it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's a really great way to finish up your language requirement and a lot of the classes over there also transfer back to certain majors at Willamette and we have a mix of summer semester and year long programs as well. But then why the big question is why Willamette though? Um, I chose Willamette one because there is a really strong sense of community with Jumpstart our pre orientation program and opening days are um, orientation our main orientation program which is five days. Um, they really start building that connection with different resources on campus. Um, during Jumpstart, it's a really small group of people where you get to meet some upperclassmen that might be interested in something you are. Um, I specifically did the community service one. And then during opening days, you also get connected to more upperclassmen and a faculty who will be your advisor like Kelly had mentioned. Um, but then I really stayed at Willamette because I noticed how committed the faculty were to really um, teaching students and they're so passionate about literally everything um, they teach about and they're so, um, opening and welcoming to all students, depending on like what your background is, if you might be struggling a little bit, they usually notice that first and reach out to you. And that's one thing that I was just amazed by. Um, you're definitely not like one out of, you know, 20 people in your class, um, 20 if that. Um, so it was really amazing to see that. And that's definitely why I stayed at Willamette. And then Claire can jump to the next slide. Um, so a little bit about life outside the classroom. So on average, our students are involved in two to three things outside, two to three things outside the classroom. So in addition to working in the Office of Admissions and being a physics major, I'm also the president of our Chinese Taiwanese Culture Association. Um, I've done tutoring and been a tutor for physics and math classes. I also do a ton of different community service learning opportunities. We have service Saturdays every Saturday that kind of go out into the local Salem community and do different types of community service. And I know a lot of my friends. Um, I am not personally musically gifted, but I know a lot of my friends are. Um, one of my roommates actually has a scholarship for piano and she's not a music major or minor, which is a really great um, way to get to, way to participate in our music community. Um, and it also helps you out with tuition and lessons and things like that. Claire, I think, my, yep. Um, so then we also have, so we are a D3 school, which means we really focus on the student part of the student athletics. Um, 
And that also means that the athletes are very integrated into the Willamette culture. It's not kind of like athletes and then other students. Um, for instance, I live with three people on the swim team. I'm really good friends with them. I also know people on like the basketball team and things like that. Um, that being said, if you don't really want to have that big time commitment to varsity sports, we do have intramural and club sports. Um, last fall, I um, participated in club soccer. All of us had not played soccer in years. Probably the last time we played was probably in elementary school and it showed, but it was a really great place to find community. We also do have fraternity and sorority life at Willamette. Um, we do recruitment in the spring, which means we don't really put a really big focus on um, our fraternity and sorority life. It is a place to find community at Willamette, but we really want to make sure, sure students are acclimated before kind of pushing any extra activities on them. But probably one of my favorite things about Willamette are all the different traditions we have. Um, the star trees, which you saw Sue show a picture of earlier, we actually put lights on them around the around um, Christmas time and they'll be singing and cookies and um, hot chocolate and things like that. And it's really a great way to kind of de-stress before finals. That being said, we also definitely, we still have our bistro, which is our source of caffeine for students on campus. They have these giant cookies that are probably the size of my head um, that are just a dollar. So they're a really great snack. I usually try to like eat half and then save the second half for when I'm done studying or like writing something. Um, we also have a ton of different clubs and organizations that actually plan really big events. So Lua, we have a huge population of students who are from Hawaii and every year, every year they um, plan this really big Luau event. Then our, we also have a lot of different um, native and indigenous students on campus as well. And they, um, pr they organize a social powwow every single year as well. And then a fun fact about Willamette is in 2013 and 2015, we actually held the record for the largest game of red light, green light. Um, we're definitely in the works to kind of plan to bring that record back to Willamette, but that's definitely um, one of the many things that we're trying to figure out how to do over the next few years. Then I'm gonna hand it off to Sue. Thanks, Tara. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, living on campus. Willamette is a residential liberal arts college. So we have a two year requirement for students to live in community with us. Um, we think it's really important, you know, the learning that happens in the classroom and then all of the incredible learning that happens by being involved in leadership and service opportunities outside of the classroom. All of that is certainly complemented by also learning to live together. <laughs> um, and, and be among peers and um, be with your, your student peers, be among faculty easily, conveniently, all of that is part of establishing a residential um, community. So for two years, students live on campus, juniors and seniors have the option to move off campus. About half of them do, just slightly less than half of them do. Um, there are lots of places very close to campus to live small, houses and apartments that are within easy walking distance. Um, but at any given time, it's about 70 to 75% of our student body that's actually living on campus. I think they really like it. It's comfortable, it's convenient, the food is good. Um, and it really is a special time in your life to live among your friends. It doesn't happen much once you're done with school. And so it's it's a great time. We have two main dining commons on campus. Gowdy Commons is the main place where most students eat their meals. Um, and then Kaneko Commons is part of TIUA that Claire talked about earlier. Both are terrific um, and students find lots and lots of options. I think our food service folks do an incredible job of helping students who have um, special dietary needs. Um, they think about things as being locally sourced. Um, it's, they, they do a wonderful job. And the question always comes up, can you bring a car if you're living on campus? And yes, you can. Even first year students can have a car. Everyone has to buy a parking pass, whether you're the president of the university or a first year student or staff, faculty, all of us um, buy a, an annual parking pass. It's very affordable. I do think a lot of cars sit when students bring them. Um, so much that you do is focused kind of on campus or in the local vicinity that um, it's, it's pretty easy to walk to an awful lot. And a lot of our off-campus programs, um, transportation is provided. So you can think about whether you need a car or not, um, but you certainly can have one if you want to. 
The next slide just shows a really typical residence hall room for Willamette. It's a two person room. The majority of our um, on campus residences are built for two students, although we have some that are triples. We have some that are singles. Um, there's one residence hall that has um, quads with a restroom that's shared among those four. Um, there are apartment style residences for upper class students and, and graduate students. So lots of different um, choices. And uh, again, it's, it's a great opportunity for students to build community and, and live together. All of the common spaces in our residences have been updated in the last couple of years. So each and every residence hall has space, has a kitchen, has gathering space, um, has places where students can come together as they're living together. Um, and so all of those are, are looking great because they've been a focus of some of our remodels in recent years. So now I wanna talk just a little bit about um, application to Willamette and how you afford this type of education. Um, Willamette is a common application school exclusively. So we don't have an institution specific application, just the common app. Um, we never charge an application fee because we don't want that to be a barrier to any student's application. Um, we ask that you complete the essay that is a part of the Common App, use one of their prompts, but we don't ask for additional supplemental essays. Um, we really want you to focus your effort and energy on that main essay, that one important piece of writing. We are a fully test optional institution, so Willamette will certainly look at SAT or ACT scores if you choose to submit them as part of your application, um, but you do not have to. You can choose the test optional route. We suspect that this year in particular, because access to testing has been so difficult, we expect more students to choose the test optional route. And that is absolutely fine. We found at Willamette that the correlation for success um, really is between students who have been great high school students, day to day, good, hard classroom workers um, in their high school curriculum. That is the recipe for success as a student at Willamette. It correlates far um, more importantly than um, those students who have a high or a low test score. Um, so test optional is a great route that shouldn't be um, worried about if students are, are wanting to not include tests. We offer early decision, early action, and regular decision routes to application at Willamette. Early decision for us is binding, just as, as it is for every institution in the country that uses early decision. So you only use that route if Willamette is absolutely your number one choice. <laughs> and that's great if it is. Um, early action is not binding. It's the same early deadline, but it there are no um, commitments that you're making with early action. You simply apply early so that you can hear back from us a little bit earlier. Um, and then regular decision comes after the winter break. The deadline is January 15th and about half of our applications come at that regular decision deadline. Um, as mentioned, SAT and uh, ACT scores are completely optional for both admission and aid at Willamette. Um, we ask for a counselor recommendation as part of the common application. We also recommend that you complete at least one teacher recommendation, but additional letters of recommendation are fine. Usually you don't need more than a couple of well-chosen letters of recommendation. We have only so much time for each application, and so we want to read those that are really well selected. It's always fun when a student attaches their resume to their application. You don't have to, but there is a place on the Common App that where that can be done. And I find that it always adds a little bit of extra in interesting information about the candidate. And then an interview, one-on-one -on -one admission interview is not required, um, but it is something that we love to do. It makes it a different process to actually read an application of somebody that I've met with. Uh, I can recall the conversation as I'm reading about them and it, this makes it a little bit more personal. Um, so we highly encourage those one-on-one -on -one interviews. We think, again, in this particular year where COVID has affected so many things, to be able to have a conversation where a student can talk about how their academic or co-curricular experiences have changed, um, I think that can be a really helpful thing both for us to have context and for the student to be able to, to um, explain a little bit about their year. So we encourage those interviews, but they aren't required. 
The next step, the next slide talks just a little bit about financial aid at Willamette. Um, when you apply with your common application, you are automatically considered for our merit scholarships at Willamette. So merit-based awards that range up to $30,000 per year and are guaranteed to renew all four years that you're with us, those awards come with automatic consideration just based on your common application credentials. You do not have to do a separate application for those. In addition to those awards, we have a number of different competitive scholarships that you can apply for that go above and beyond those base merit-based awards. So if you have an interest in speech and debate, music, theater, the visual arts, if you think you're planning to major in public health, environmental science, or one of the STEM fields, then there just may be a extra scholarship that you want to look into at Willamette. These scholarships sit on top of our, um, the already awarded merit-based scholarships. They do require an additional application or in some cases um, audition. So it's important to check our website to see what those scholarships look like, if they might fit you and your interests. Um, and to be aware of the, the deadlines and the requirements for those. Sometimes I think students uh, worry that they may not be the right person for say a music scholarship if they aren't planning to major in music. But as Tara mentioned earlier, lots of students who are not music majors are awarded music scholarships just for their involvement in our program. We rely heavily on non-majors to fill out some of our um, performing groups. So if you have an interest, you really should consider one of the competitive scholarships. And then of course, um, most of our students at Willamette are eligible for some amount of need-based financial aid. We have an incredibly socioeconomically diverse student body at Willamette um, and we are able to help a lot. If you are interested in being considered for need-based aid, it's the FAFSA that we use. So the free application for federal student aid, that form becomes available on October 1st. So this coming week. Um, and that's a process that needs to be completed each year that you're at Willamette. So yeah. I'm going to toss it back to Claire, I think, who's going to help us answer if there are any any questions out there. Wonderful. Thanks, Sue. Um, thanks for sticking with us here, everybody. Um, and thanks for your wonderful questions that you have submitted in the chat form of the Q&A form here with us. We're going to take a couple moments to answer those for you now. And the first question um, I'm going to ask Sue to answer. Um, Kelly had brought up our partnership with a new partnership with um, the Pacific Northwest College of Art, but I believe that question was answered privately. So I want to be able for everyone who is joining us to learn just briefly about our new um, partnership with PNCA. So Sue, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, so people, maybe people who are regional um, noticed that announcement that um, just came out last week that Willamette and um, one of the region's oldest and really most pre prestigious art institutions, the Pacific Northwest College of Art, we have partnered and will become um, one institution in the coming years. There's still lots to understand about what that process is going to look like, but we're really excited about it at Willamette. Um, in part because we think there will be opportunity for some of the partnerships like we have with our other graduate programs. Um, the Pacific Northwest College of Art offers some amazing graduate level programs in um, the, the visual arts, fine and visual arts. And so um, for students to be able to um, earn a bachelor's degree at Willamette and a master's of fine arts at Pacific Northwest College of Art, or for students to be able to spend, um, Willamette students to be able to spend some time doing an internship in downtown Portland with PNCA. Um, we think some PNCA students may like to combine that, um, that very intensive art experience that they've had at the undergraduate level with our business business uh, graduate degree. There are all kinds of opportunities for partnership that we think we'll be able to explore um, in the coming in the coming years. So more to come on that, but but everybody I think is very excited. Thanks, Sue. 
Tara, I'm going to hand this next question to you. Can you talk about what the student experience has been like in the era of COVID we are all experiencing right now? Um, one, I think I was really unsure of kind of what it would look like coming back for fall semester. Um, but I think, you know, the first day I was back on campus, it was so obvious that everyone had the community mindset of, you know, all of these guidelines are in place to keep everybody safe and everybody really wanted to follow them. I think one of the biggest ones or we require masks on campus everywhere, um, even when you're outside, because there's just, it is a small campus, but it, you know, when you're passing between classes, that means, you know, you're probably going to be walking pretty close to someone, things like that. Um, and all of the things like that, the um, academic classrooms have been um, changed a little bit to make sure airflow is really good. And for those students who are remote learners, um, the past few weeks with kind of the local fires and things like that, I um, tried to take part in in-person classes as much as possible, but now going back to remote learning, um, the te all of the, our professors have made it super accessible. They're really good at following up with students who are 100% remote. Um, I have a couple of friends who are doing all of their classes remotely, um, even though they are in Salem, whether that be on campus or off campus, and they've received great communication from professors and other like administrative level, level um, staff to make sure everything's going smoothly. Um, students, I think, across the board feel really supported by different faculty and staff and things like that. And they really, and I think the big thing is we know who to reach out to if something's not working and um, everybody's been really good about figuring out, well, this isn't working, but what can we do um, to make that work better? And that's something that is so amazing to see with, and because it's such a small community, you know these people and you know, oh, you know, our um, Dean of Students, Lisa, like I can send her an email and talk to her about this and set up an appointment and say like, this isn't really working for me, but and she'll, you know, she'll either help you figure out how to change that or she'll um, pass you off to someone who can help you a little bit more if it's specifically for like, a class or something like that. Um, but I think, again, just across the board, students are really supported right now. And um, in this like unsure environment where all of us are dealing with so many things um, all at once, it's, it's been really nice to have such supportive people around me. Wonderful, thanks, Tara. So we have a question about test optional. Um, and can you talk a little bit more in depth about if that can harm a student's application in any way, if they were to write, what does test optional really mean for us? Yeah, that's a really common question right now. I, I know lots of institutions that have not been test optional in the past are choosing to go test optional right now, just for the time of COVID again, because of lack of accessibility to those exams and so, they're going to take a break from require them, requiring them for a time. But Willamette isn't one of those places. We've been test optional for, I think, four or five full cycles now. So um, we have really become accustomed to um, understanding how to read an application holistically uh, without any reliance on a, a test score. Again, the test score is not predictive for us in terms of what that means for a student's ability to succeed at Willamette. Um, the transcript, the course choices, um, the, the rigor in the student's uh, coursework in high school, those are the things that help us understand academically if a student is ready uh, for the kinds of challenges that we will present in the classroom at Willamette. So, um, so it, it cannot harm you in any way to not submit test scores, to check that test optional box when you apply with the common application. Um, you just can have full confidence at Willamette that you will have equal consideration to every other student. And again, that's both for admission and for aid consideration. So we're going to look at all the other components of your application, the transcript, the activities, um, the um, things that you care about, the things that you write about, the things that your recommenders write about you, all of those things come into play in terms of our making both that admission and aid decision um, and test scores are not, they're just not currently a factor. So it's safe to apply test optional to Willamette. And for those who are looking broadly, um, fairtest.org is the most up-to-date and reliable resource right now to see other institutions um, that are looking at being test optional and, and what that truly means for them. It is not a one size fits all. We don't all use test optional in the same way, um, but it, it can be a helpful resource. 
Wonderful. Thanks, Sue. Thank you to all of my presenters who joined me today, and thank you for the audience who joined us this afternoon as well. Our contact information is on the screen in front of you here. If you would like to contact any of us, we would be more than happy to chat with you. We are out of time, but there are a handful of wonderful other opportunities that you can continue to engage with us online. We have open houses this fall on Saturdays called Cardinal Gold Day. We offer our daily informational sessions, virtual tours, one maybe with our own student Tara here. I encourage you to check out our website to continue to connect with us through the rest of your college admission process. Thank you so much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, when you close your window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just many of, uh, or one of many sessions being provided. So make sure you sign up for additional ones. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other session recordings on the website and where you signed up for this session. Thanks so much and have a great one. Nice job, y'all.